We have sharks for you today, showcasing what the harpooner can do. We have some Madolche love, and anti-meta is still doing its thing. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more ass content. Oh boy, oh boy. You guys remember Harpooner, right? This was one of the cards that every fish duelist or shark supporter, water advocate was really looking forward to because it's a free extender by just punting, you know, another card out of your hand or, you know, you need to special summon that card and then discard this card as an extension method in order to kind of do what you need to do for this deck, which is actually pretty cool. Now, the major things with this deck, I mean, two Butanifal Princess, all right, we're cooking here. Uh, I actually like the idea that we're getting away with playing two of this, because honestly, this card's been a little bit of a hit or miss some days. Like, well, let's call it what it is. You know, it gets ashed, you go, mmm, the frustration actually appears. We are doing the one armored Xyz and the one full armored Xyz in here as well. So basically, you know, you're going to be using this to get the full maximum value off of the Xyz armor torpedo. Nothing really changes there too much. I mean, the biggest thing your deck is still going to do, it's still going to be the Stealth Kraken and the ability to rotate into a Kraken spawn. This card is uh, some of the, the most fair Yu-Gi-Oh you can ever actually experience. And of course, we do have a Gozen match in here. You know, fortunately, Floodgates are limited to one currently. But, you know, you'll still be able to get some free value off of this. Also, shout out to the whole Utopic Future Draco down here. I think the more I look at this card, the more I kind of realize how stupid that this can actually be. Your side deck down here is going to handle effectively most of the problems that you're going to run into. Especially if you run into one of those cash Tira players out here having the Super Ancient Organism as that little cleanup option for you to do your thing. A-OK. -okay. Um, there's not much else to really talk about in terms of your shark innovations. Um, we do have the future support coming. I know a lot of people are excited just to get the chance <coughs> to take this deck to the next level. Hmm. I don't know. Also, two Synthana, which I actually think that's a, the right ratio for the little extension options. Okay. Flo, your move TCG talked about a non-meta tournament. And I'll be honest with you, this is this looks pretty meta in my opinion. Uh, we are sporting off with 45 cards, which isn't really too major. Um, having 45 is fine. Um, you're, I mean, you're on three spells for this deck, which is crazy to me. The one Chateau, the one Salam, and your one ticket. This is all pretty f standard. I do see down here that we are playing a copy of Reflasia for the best trap hole to, you know, not get blasted by some hand trap. I also see, I, don't, I really don't know how I feel about Simul Archfiend being down here as a little option for this deck because you're playing in a little bit more of a, a non-meta tournament, right? So you would want to use this card, you know, against Fire King, Snake Eye, all the little things that you'd want to have for that. But I still do suspect this was still good enough. You know, this deck was able to get first place. And also, holy hand traps. Also, this card right here, the Herald of Orange Light, just being able to blast your opponent with, you know, hey, you have so many stupid little fairies in this deck. It's actually kind of insane. Um, just a, a quick shout out to just how stupid Herald of Orange Light can actually be. Um, also, this is pretty interesting. This deck actually got away with playing a giant hand. Now, I, I don't really think this came up all that much. Giant Hand is definitely one of those cards that, you know, would just be an end board piece because it's a free detach to negate a monster effect, which is pretty good. Um, and then, of course, you know, if your opponent sets up too much of a board, you can just kind of Exiton Knight, equalize things out, and then use the rest of the Medulce combo to kind of put you back into a position. Um, I mean, as the engine stands right now, until it gets its actual, like, you know, interruption on the opponent's turn which we will eventually have. It will be nice to see how the deck does change up, but you're still relying on the Vernal Sys stuff. This is actually pretty cool to see. All right, Anti-Meta Dino, or <laughs> I almost said this was Dynamorphia. Uh, this is very heavily inspired by the list that we saw, I believe it was out of YCS Brazil, um, where they were using the Animancipated Friends here. So basically you excavate the top cards of your deck equal to the number of rock monsters you control plus five. So you can get an excavate five off of this to add a excavated rock monster to your hand with a level equal to or lower than the number of cards excavated. So, I mean, you'll be able to get a level four relatively easily on this. I mean, um, this does hit a Dyna. I mean, okay. If you resolved one in this opening hand, 
you wouldn't get anything, but that's fine. The, the whole goal of the card is you want to be able to see one of your six rock monsters that you play. You are, you do have to rely on the Earth Barrier Statue right now. Unfortunately, Earthy Boy here is going to be the best barrier statue kind of available in the course of the game right now, because there's not a lot of decks that are doing massive special summons. Well, I mean, okay, yeah, 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 there are a lot of decks that are doing special summons. But Earth is currently the element that definitely is the most out of the field. Because uh, even, like, you could play water, but having the Anemancipator Friends here as an option to, you know, excavate down into the deck to find something, unfortunately, there just isn't a better rock search available to you. Um, and, of course, I mean, searches for both Fossil Dine and the Earth Barrier Statue. Also, the Decisive Bottle of Gondola is one of the most broken cards we've got in modern era Yu-Gi-Oh! history. Punting off one of these stupid cards, getting a free punishment... And free protection for your fossil dyna via, uh, you know, the one battle. Sure, man, sign me up. I'll, I'll take my free value to control my opponent. The minute you get the moon mirror shield, it's just kind of game over for your opponent. So, honestly, this this crap is actually broken in the grand scheme of things. Oh, we have some runic stun for you today. Now, I will say runic stun has not been performing up to the standard that I want to see. That Does that mean that the deck is bad? No. It just means that we're kind of in a position right now in the course of the meta that if you're playing this deck, you've got some issues. Um, one of the big things I, I will say that this deck did kind of have to change is it does have to have Grave of the Super Ancient Organism in here. You kind of have to rely on this card, especially if you're getting body slammed out of the room by Tenpai Dragons. This card at least makes sure that, you know, if your opponent puts a big special monster on the field, it's going to be negated. You're not going to have to deal with those big pesky synchro monsters, you know, being pains in your butt. So this actually is very good. We still, do our, or still are doing the two synchro zones. We do have the one Desires in here, which is actually fine. I've seen a lot of discussion points with people bouncing back and forth on the amount of desires for this build, or that's fine. Also playing triple duality, I think that's fine. The build is still sticking to the one card scanner, yes. I'm so happy to see card scanner is stuck around in this deck in its current iterations. Looping the, the tip with this is just actually insane. I do see that this build is playing a curse seal. Uh, the Forbidden Spell, I haven't really seen anything really too spicy with this, but I guess if your opponent is bringing in things like Cosmic Cyclone, you're just going to be able to cancel out the Cosmic and just kind of laugh at your opponent. Like, that, that's the major value you want for that. Any sort of back row removal that you could just kind of seal away with this should get you into a pretty good win, game winning position. Uh, this is for time. This controls your opponent. Still glad to see that that's still two mono is the way to go in here. I do like Inspect Border, but. We're still in such a board break scenario that having this be your little guy to be able to play the game on your turn and ensure that you know you don't get hand trapped, I still think is the way to go with this. So overall, not too bad. I, I like my runic stun innovations. And we have, oh boy, Chimera with a Melodious package. I, I do want to say this Melodious package stuff has been so stupid to actually see. Like genuinely, this card has been nuts like holy crap especially you know when you can draw your opening hand you're like especially if you like have the gazelle or something to like do a search you can just go down activate the ostinato your opponent's gonna now have to do the decision tree you know do we stop this from resolving or what and i mean yeah, this kind of does let you make a free little cross shape along the way which is like a free monster reborn for the deck and then you can step on into the apollosa it's actually stupid how much value you get out of this. You are also playing two copies of the Nightmare Apprentice in here, along with the Diabells. I'm actually kind of happy to see Diabells having play in here as well. Most builds have just kind of tossed Diabells to the side. I mean, it is a free illusion monster and a brick sometimes, but if you do run into your Sinful Spoils matchups, this is a free little body to put on the field. Um, also, only dedicating two slots to Gazelle is very interesting, but you're on a 2-2 two -two split on this, so I can get behind that. We're also playing the Tam Tam built into the main deck as well. Huh. It's actually kind of cool, along with the one Concerto. No real major problems with that. Imagine just getting to Pendulum someone with this deck and just kind of laugh at your opponent. <laughs> like, the, the things you could do with the Ostinato package being as splashable as it actually is, is kind of insane. Well... What do you guys think about today's decks? A lot of very interesting things. So please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. So your beautiful faces back here. Learn day, guys. Peace out.
patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.